Hello everyone, my name is Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. Today is a fantastic show. We have Lloyd Burrell on the show talking about electromagnetic sensitivity and if EMFs are causing your health issues and what to do about it. We go over the whole gamut, like all the different symptoms that people can have. This is all in the research, this is all in the studies, even by the studies the telecommunications companies and the government have done themselves. Um, everything that's talked about in the show today is, uh, is science-backed, and he talks about all the different symptoms, health issues, cancers, all these different things that are attributable to exposure to EMF radiation. So we talk about that. We talk about solutions. We talk about um, his course. He has a new book coming out as well. I'm going to discuss all that and more on the show today, including 5G, the difference between 4G and 5G, and all, all the different issues that you need to know about to protect yourself. Because I focus on heavy metal detoxification with my clients, and they have symptoms from heavy metals into chemicals, but we, I also address the EMF issue with clients as the very first thing, as one of the initial things that we do, because EMF caused so many symptoms and so many issues in the body that we have to, you know, just prioritize fixing that before we even get to the detox part. You, you've got to because uh, the EMFs cause so many different problems. Uh, they cause issues with your, your body's energy field, with biochemical issues, with sleep, anxiety, depression. They just interfere in your body's functioning in so many different ways that that has to be addressed so that then people are in a better position to, to detox heavy metals and chemicals. So a very important part of the conversation. And I know you guys listening are concerned about heavy metal detox and wondering about your toxin levels. So I created a quiz. You can go to heavymetalsquiz.com and take this quiz and based on some of your lifestyle factors, environmental exposures, find out your relative levels of toxins in your body and then learn the next steps. Where do you start to detox your body? After the quiz, you get a free video series that tells you what to do next on your detox journey. So check out heavymetalsquiz.com and take the quiz today. Our guest today, Lloyd Burrell, he found out one day in 2002, he answered his cell phone and soon after developed highly debilitating symptoms from all types of electromagnetic devices in his home and workplace. And he went to multiple medical practitioners who couldn't help him and he wasted thousands on solutions that didn't work and it took him nearly 10 years to recover his health. He has now made it his life's mission to raise awareness about the dangers of electromagnetic fields or EMF and share the remarkable discoveries he's made on his journey. Lloyd is a regular speaker at online events, podcasts, radio shows, and hosts his own EMF health podcast. And he's also the author of two books on EMFs and creator of the EMF Health Summit. His latest book um, on EMFs is available at all bookshops, and he's also married with two grown children and lives in sunny southwest France. Uh, you can learn more about Lloyd and check out his website at electricsense.com. Lloyd, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Wendy. It's a pleasure to be here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you came to specialize in electromagnetic pollution? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to do that. What happened was my life changed. One day in 2002, I answered my cell phone and it wasn't I, that I got some devastating news that my dog had died or something. It was the energy of this device I was using, this cell phone. And I was running a rental business at the time. People were calling me to book for their summer holiday our rental units and I was receiving calls and this day February 2002 I put the cell phone to my ear and I began to feel just a bit weird it was just strange kind of altered spatial awareness and it went from being strange 
to unpleasant to unbearable in a really short space of time, literally a few calls. And I've told this story many times and joke it to, to many doctors. And I love saying this bit is that it got so bad, I actually went to see my doctor. <laughs> um, and my doctor, who's a friend, this was after about three, four days of my wife nagging to me, <laughs> said, um, he gave me the one server, you know, and basically he couldn't find anything wrong with me. He said, Lloyd, it's stress. And, and I f felt like saying, you're kidding me, aren't you? <laughs> this is not stress. But I didn't say that, being British and very polite. Well, I could have seen, said something even less polite, yeah. <laughs> I guess. He said, look, go away and you'll be fine. Come back, you know, and take a week off. Uh, so I took his advice, went away with the kids, went to Centre Parks, this holiday thing. And I was fine for a week. <clears throat> then I came back the Monday morning. The phone rang at like 9.03 a.m. And boom, there it was back again. And from that point on, it was a slippery, slidey slope not being literally not being able to use my cell phone because I got so much pain, this burning sensation next to my, on the right hand side of my head where I was holding the phone, um, prickly skin on my face and then all over my body, just intense pain in my ear, like almost as if an electric drill was going in there. So the pain was intense when I was using the phone. And then I got all this other pain symptoms which were going on um, when I wasn't using the phone, which was just getting worse and worse. I was like a zombie. I could sleep and sleep and sleep and get up and I was just knackered all the time, uh, which wasn't me. And lots of other symptoms, all body symptoms, aches and pains in all kinds of strange places, uh, which were just unexplainable. I remember I was playing tennis at the time. And instead of getting like tennis elbow in my right arm, I got it in my left arm and just all kinds of um, digestive problems. And I was really not in a good place and it was getting worse and I was reacting to everything. It wasn't just because I realized it was cell phone. So I stopped using my cell phone, gave the cell phone to my wife <laughs> and I started using the computer and then I started reacting to the computer. I was reacting to the TV. I was reacting to the radio in the car. I was reacting when I was going around to friends, you know, and with whatever they got going on, cordless phones and things. And it got so bad. I was even reacting to the corded landline. So I was taking the calls on the corded landline telephone and even that, I was beginning to burn up. And I went from doctor to doctor with my, my doctor sent me to various specialists, had all kinds of tests on, and basically they could find nothing wrong with me, which was absurd. Um, the only thing they could find, I got slight blood pressure, high blood, blood pressure, and it was very disconcerting to say the least. In fact, it was just downright scary. I just didn't know where to go, what to do. And so I just kind of told myself I was okay when I wasn't. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And then one day in like 2004, I was reading an article about a guy, CEO of a big food group in the UK. And it was telling about this guy and he couldn't use his phone and he had to switch the electricity off at night to go to sleep. And he's dictating to his secretary. He was driving around in a battered old car and they gave a name to this condition he had, which was electrical sensitivity or electrical hypersensitivity. And that was it. I kind of realized I wasn't the only person on the planet. You weren't this. crazy. You weren't crazy. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. And uh, I realized I wasn't crazy. There was somebody else like this. In fact, there were other people because he spotted that was in the article. And from there, that's when I said about, I kind of, got a grip Lloyd <laughs> and um, set about looking for solutions and it took me about 10 years really to get my health back on track and I now share this information what I learned and that is the mission I'm on now is to raise awareness about these dangers and share solutions and it was really just by accident this all started. 
And that's great. I mean, you have one of the best EMF courses out there and, you know, people need this information. It's so important. What's why I'm talking about it more and more and interviewing experts like yourself, because there's so many people out there that are electrosensitive, that are sensitive to EMFs and they're going to the doctor. The doctor has no clue even today and they just get labeled crazy or get a card for a psychiatrist or they're a hypochondriac or something. So, you know, I think you have to be very careful who you're speaking to when it comes to your health and you need awareness that Wi-Fi dramatically impacts your health. And so let, let's lay the groundwork uh, for this. Like what exactly is electromagnetic fields and like mm-hmm. where, do, where do, are we encountering them? Yeah, uh, and I'll just bounce back if I can on one thing you said there is that it's very true what you're saying and there are people being affected and there are people getting symptomatic and I I regard myself as blessed that I got the reaction. Now, I mean, I thought it was hell and I thought, why me? I was into all that victim mentality at the time. But now, that you know, with hindsight, I realized that it was one of the best things that ever happened because I was able to protect myself from this incredibly dangerous um, toxin, digital toxin, we call it. But the key thing is here, and that's what I want to just pinpoint and pull out of this uh, little segment, is that EMFs affect everybody, and everybody is electrically sensitive. That's to say our bodies. And this is really key because there's a lot of people thinking, maybe listening to this, poor Lloyd. Well, no, actually, poor you. Because if you are not protecting yourself, then, yeah, then maybe this could happen to you. I really hope it doesn't. And particularly, I hope you don't. It doesn't happen to your kids. But that, that, so that's just an aside. But yeah, to answer your question. Oh, I have one thing I wanted to, to add there. And, yeah. and it's interesting that you said everyone's electrosensitive. Everyone's being affected by this. Yes. And it's like so, a spectrum. At a, at a cellular it, level. Yes. yes. And it's a spectrum like anything. Some people tolerate it better or they maybe don't feel it, but they might have just underlying stress that's just always there. Or some people are completely debilitated. So it's like anything. There's a spectrum of how people are affected and the symptoms that they present with. Exactly. And what the, and I'm, I'm quoting studies. So what I'm talking about here, and I'm sorry, I'm going to give you a plug for my book because yeah. <laughs> I've just written a book. <laughs> we want it. We which want it. Is, plug away. Um, over 500 references. Um, so there's a lot of science and it's all about the science, the simple science of protecting yourself and healing chronic inflammation and living a naturally healthy life in our electromagnetic world and horrible picture. Someone, I didn't like that picture, but my subscribers did. (laughs) Um, And yeah, so it's, um, it's, the the point is that we're all electrically sensitive in the, in the sense that it's affecting our cells and it's the science that's saying this. Okay, it's the science, the science to back this up. And it's the point that some people feel it and some people don't, as you're saying, well, there's this spectrum. Um, but so to answer your question about what are electromagnetic fields. Yeah, just for anyone that may not know exactly. Yes. As, yeah, because it is confusing. This whole subject is really confusing. There's a lot of terminology. And I was didn't want to know all about this. It scared me because there wasn't a solution and that's why I was putting it off and um, so I can understand why it's people are not drawn to this subject it, it's um, and, and that's what I've tried to do with the book is make it um, approachable so electro EMFs I say EMFs all the time and what I what I mean when I say EMFs are electromagnetic fields some people, when they say EMFs, they mean something else. They mean electromagnetic frequencies. Some people don't even use the word EMFs. They use EMR, uh, electromagnetic radiation. Yes. Um, some people use other words like radio frequency microwave radiation. So all these, so the radio microwave radiation, 
that's a subset of this thing which I call EMFs. And it is kind of standard EMFs. I didn't choose that term by accident i kind of i asked myself this question which term am i going to go with and i said well this one seems the most um, widely accepted so that's what it is electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic fields are everywhere we're actually in it's all about vibration so we're in a vibrational universe and we are vibrational beings and everything has a vibration and all our cells are actually, we're, we're, we are, in a sense, electromagnetic beings. But this is all natural. And our cells are communicating. You know, we've got parts of our body, for instance, our brain, where we're taking uh, measurements yeah, with devices that are measuring the electrical signal, same with our heart. But our cells are communicating. There is, there's a chemical component and there's this electrical, but it's, it's intrinsically linked um, and we get the chemicals, and that's what creates this electrical charge uh, between the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. So it's all back. I'm always going back to the cell because that's what we are, this collection of trillions of cells. And the point is, here's the kicker, <laughs> is that these electromagnetic fields from common or garden, everyday devices, which we're all using, and which we're not given a second thought to. And yes, I am talking about cell phones, but not just cell phones. It's all manner of devices. Things like, well, Wi-Fi, obviously, which you referred to, but many other things. Our homes are just filled now with these devices which are emitting radio frequency, microwave radiation. And when I'm saying microwave, then that makes you think of microwave oven yeah okay and it's the same kinds of frequencies microwave ovens at 2.4 gigahertz most phones between 2 gigahertz and under 1 gigahertz 800 megahertz something like that depends where you live so we are being impacted by these devices which are taking over our lives and which are emitting these electromagnetic fields and why is this important? Because thousands of studies, and they're not always, they're not all in here. I mean, there is a lot in here, but there are uh, literally thousands of studies. For instance, in 1971, there was a military report which came out. In 1971, 2,300 studies um, on essentially microwave radiation. Uh, studies going back decades on this wireless aspect of it. So that is that is the why, is because we've got these devices, and it's not just about wireless either. Unfortunately, folks, <laughs> it gets even more gloomy. It's There's wireless and there's wired, and that's another thing which uh, my book is – slightly different to any other book because I've read pretty much all the books that have been written on this, obviously, because I've been online since 2009, rabbiting on about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I talk about both um, because they're, it's not like you can say, well, you know, why that's it's in a wire and it's okay. And no, no, it's not okay either. And we can't say that, wireless is worse than wired it depends on so many things your you know personal biological makeup as you say this spectrum you know um of how people that are sensitive and not sensitive so yeah so wired and wireless emfs but the the general term here is emfs and then we've got all these categories um, we've got these two main categories, wired and wireless, and I can go further into the detail if you would like. Yeah, and so to, just to give people like the, just kind of like the overview that this is just everywhere. It's all around you. It's only going to get worse. We're going to be talking about 5G in a second, but why don't we kind of, just so people can kind of connect the dots to maybe their health issues, what are some of the symptoms 
that people can uh, be experiencing that are related or caused by uh, EMF radiation. And I know one of them is weight gain. And I, I'm really, really concerned that uh, because Wi-Fi interferes so much in glucose uptake in cells, that people are going to have higher blood sugar, more diabetes, more weight gain, et cetera, because Wi-Fi and EMFs are interfering in our body's ability to metabolize blood sugar. Can you talk about that and other symptoms of EMF toxicity? Absolutely. The, the really strange thing, EMFs are like nothing else, as I see it uh, in Lloyd's world. And Lloyd is, I guess, a bit, EMF, if I'm totally honest, and I like to be as honest as possible, a little bit EMF obsessed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My, yeah, my world is a little bit, um, I see it through this lens. And there was a time when there was like not a day went by when I wasn't discovering, wow, EMS can do that too. And wow, they can do that too. And so what I've come to realize is that EMFs can inf impact you really in just any way, any and every way. And it seems to be whatever your weakest link is because it's back down to the cells and they're impacting us on so many different levels. So they could impact you, your immune system. So it could just cause like a bit of a cold uh, flu. Cause I remember my, it, it felt like I had a hangover all the time. Uh, every morning I was getting up and I was dog tired and it was like my head my brain was like rattling around in my head, you know, when you've had too much to drink. <laughs> and, and I got the uh, dental amalgams as well. So something going on there as well. Um, and there was just so many symptoms, Wendy, that it's really difficult to, but I can give you some common ones. And the common ones are related to where we, people are putting the cell phone. And that is... Uh, tinnitus is very common. The prickly skin is very common. Uh, the tingling is very common. The tingling in the hand when people are texting, because I say that's one of my rate, and we'll get to solutions, I hope, because I like to talk about solutions more than I talk about the problems. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, people holding a cell phone and, and getting that. Uh, I've got a friend who does it. And I'm going, don't do it. He's getting tingly skin all day long when he's holding his cell phone and he's trying not to, but he's got a job and he needs to do that. And I know that. But um, as you'll see, as we'll come to, there's lots of things we can do to mitigate these effects. Many simple things uh, we can do. So it can impact us at every different level imaginable um, physical mental emotional spiritual uh, every just in every aspect of our being of our very being because because it goes back to what i was saying it's it's just so all-encompassing and we are these vibrational beings and it's impacting us at a cellular level if you're looking at a sort of on a biological level at this very the foundation of who we are so it can be it can be a bad hip if you put your cell phone in your hip you know hip replacements i was reading about that it can be there's you know um, heart issues tachycardias arrhythmias heart attacks uh, the year that cell phones were uh, introduced there was which was like 1996 then there was an explosion in cardiac arrests in american athletes so young people so young people are particularly affected and you know there's a whole load of other sort of not quite emf issues or related issues to do with well, kind of anxiety issues because how it impacts us, how it upsets our hormones. Uh, we get like a hit, uh, literally, because it affects our um, biology chemically, our biochemistry. It's just crazy. It's just mind-blowing how all this can affect you. And then you've got the symptoms. And again, the unfortunate thing is people are getting some symptoms, but they're not making the association between the symptoms and these devices which are creating these exposures, which 
it's not just the cell phone. There's the wired as well. There's all this that's going on in our homes. Um, electric fields, magnetic fields, which are in our homes on our electrical wiring and dirty electricity as well. <laughs> yes. So it only, yeah, it's, uh, I know I'm laughing, but it's not a laughing matter really. And, and then all these diseases uh, downstream, which, and I like to say this eases because, because it's cool now, because that's the way I see it, because it's energetic um, and cancer. Very clear um, if you're looking at the studies. There's so much science here, Wendy. I mean, I don't know where to start, but just the NTP study, National Toxicology Program, uh, $30 million US federal study, clear evidence of cancer. That was the conclusion. Mm. Clear uh -huh. evidence of cancer. That was, that's a very recent study, high-profile interphone study, $25 million study, cancelling again. Uh, we've got big, big studies. The cell phone um, industry's own study after there was a big thing in the 1990s with a lady called Susan Reynard who died uh, following use of a cell phone, the husband went on, Larry King, Motorola shares, took a dive. The industry repost was to commission this big study, Dr. George Carlo at the head, to prove that cell phones were safe. They found just the opposite. And he was fired, but he came out and said, you know, the truth, uh, that, so there was this link again it was cancer that was a link he was talking about um tumor specifically so yeah so much science and people say well, yeah but where's the science where's the science there is so much science it's just that people are not hearing about the science and it's only on places like this perhaps you know on interviews like this and things because the truth is people do not go and read the studies i would not be reading the studies if uh, I was not wanting to share the studies with you know people uh, like yourself and, and and sharing the information. Yeah, well, I think boring. I think a lot of the truth is getting suppressed when you see things like the New York Times publishing articles how wireless is safe or five G is safe. I mean, clearly they're being bought. These are these are P public relations articles that are being paid for for placement and they mislead the public purposely. And so, uh, and my, my, one of my biggest concerns is the impact on sleep, that we already have a rash of sleep issues and sleep disorders that is only going to increase with the rollout of 5G. Uh, can you talk about that? Well, there's two big subjects there you've hit on, uh, sleep and 5G. Um, but I'd like, to, yeah, I'd like to talk about both. But let's talk about 5G because it's mm -hmm. a kind of hot bottom topic. Yeah, yeah. So 5G, next generation of cellular technology. The G just means generation. So that's the first thing to, to clear up is don't, because people are saying, well, I've already got 5G on my modem or my modem router. Sorry, I say router. Uh, <laughs> but that's not the same. It's that's the gigahertz that it's using the 5.6 or 5.8 gigahertz. That's not 5G. 5G is a new generation of cellular technology starting out with 1G, and we basically moved up the G's, <laughs> and it was getting more and more evolved, more better. That's what we're told. But yeah, it's better. It's more convenient. It's faster. You can download a Hollywood movie in a blink of an eye, and it's great. And it does your washing and makes you egg and chips or whatever. I don't know. It's amazing. It is amazing. But there is a huge downside. We're moving for the first time into these frequency bands, which have not previously been used before at anything like this level. So they have been used actually by the military for crowd dispersal so hmm. to hurt people and now we're using them like on a massive scale uh, we don't know what the effects are going to be we do have studies so we're moving into so 5g is the difference is is that we are going to see if this happens and it is happening because we've got test cities but to make 5g work 
5G is actually moving into higher frequency bands than at the moment. So you remember at the beginning I was saying 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz around there for the cell phones. The thing is those bands are saturated. And so the, the industry is moving into these higher frequency bands because it's all they, they can't develop. And what they want to do is make money. Okay, <laughs> and they, they make a lot. There's a lot of money to be made out of this, obviously. Um, so they're moving into the high frequency bands, and these higher frequency bands, unfortunately, the higher the frequency we, we, we go, the less penetrative power. So, what does that mean? It means we have to put the antennas all over the place, antennas all over every third or fourth house, every other lamppost kind of thing in big cities. And we're putting antennas up in space, uh, satellites, I beg your pardon, satellites with antennas, up in space, like 45,000, the last I heard, to beam down the 5G radiation so that we can get our Hollywood movie at the blink of an eye or whatever, you know. And this is the world we're moving into. So it's about, 5G is about, yeah, lots of maybe really cool things like driverless cars, if you're into that and about you running low on milk and your fridge sending out a signal to call in a drone, which is going to deliver milk to your doorstep. Yeah, I mean, it sounds fantastic. I know, and it's exciting. And I I'm love sorry, gadgets. I'm sorry, Lloyd, but I can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's great. It's the kind of thing you, you watch a movie and you think that is really cute, but do we want to live in that world? Yeah. Well, maybe we do, but do we want to live in it when we understand what the dangers are? And the dangers are with 5G, notably. So already we've got lots of dangers in terms of how these frequencies impact our bodies, uh, lots of science, uh, how they impact our cells, notably the cell membrane, which is kind of important because when you hear the word membrane, you think, well, it's just that thing that goes around the cell. Well, it's actually like the same, the, the brain of the cell, if you want. It's like really important. Uh, and it's impacting the cell membrane. Uh, it's impacting the cell. It's impacting the DNA. It's, it's impacting the, the enzymes, the, just the, the whole you know, every, every aspect of our being and deregulating and it's just this slow chip, chip, chip or drip, drip, drip micro stressor which you're fine, you're fine, you're fine and then one day you're not fine. And the 5G, we've already got all that going on and everybody's thinking, oh, that's okay, I'm fine with the cell phone or whatever. No, no, no. But we've already got all that going on and what the studies are telling us for all that. And then on top of it, we're adding in 5G and the 5G studies which we've got, which are mainly Russian because the Russians are ahead of the game on this thing, on this with regards to electromagnetic fields research and they've really for decades they've been ahead of us skin problems immune system uh, issues and also impacts on the uh, environment on insects plants animals uh, the studies on this impacts on the eye on, and on the heart and yeah that's about the lot of it so it is quite limited the research we have on this and the truth is we just don't know where we're going but the concern is we've already got the 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and now we're adding in the 5G. You know, where, you know where, wh what does this mean? And do we really want a cell, you know, a cell tower on every third or fourth um, home, you know, opposite your, pointing at your, in at your bedroom kind of thing? Do we really yeah, in front of your child's school. Right next yeah. to your child's school or your child's yeah. bedroom. And I, I mean, I know so many uh, families where the child has a tumor, has a brain yes. tumor. Yes. And the first thing I think of is uh, EMF that's yes. contributing to that. One of my best friends from high school, her son has a tumor. The doctor is like not looking at EMF as an underlying root cause, but, uh, but we, I know why. But so let's talk about how much stronger 5G is than 4G. 
And so uh, I, I've been traveling around, you know, in, I was in Italy and Greece last summer. They had 3G there. I just went to Mexico over the holidays. They have 3G there. Not very good Wi-Fi signal. Very frustrating. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, I, I, can, I can function. Um, but uh, so in 4G is in most of the U.S. Where I live in Huntington Beach, we, we rolled out 5G in July. Mm. And so how much stronger is 5G than 4G? So 5G is a little bit, because we're, we're kind of using this word 5G, but it means all kinds of things. But we're moving into 5G, they're moving into this 5G, this millimeter wave band, so very small wave band, high frequency, but a very short wave band. And it's an inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. So the wave length, sorry, not wave band, wave length is very small. We're calling it it's called millimeter wave because it's millimeter. It's uh, literally in millimeters, a few millimeters. So very small an uh, antennas, tiny antennas, these small cells. It's so it's not about strength. That's the thing, and this is what the industry is going on about. And per so people are thinking it's about strength and it's about power. It is actually about power, but in another sense, what's important is personal power, <laughs> not the power that we're talking about. But the power is, so what the industry is trying to say is, and he's, and he's saying, they're based on basically 1960s, 50-year-plus uh, research that there are no thermal effects, that these, that these technologies are very low power, and that they are very low level. These are all the words that they use, all the terminology. Thing. Low power, low level, no heating effect, therefore no problem. And that is just so not true. And so we have this thing called the EMF spectrum, and we have ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. And all these things I'm talking about, it's all non-ionizing, which they're saying safe because it doesn't have sufficient energy to break bonds for, uh, in molecules, okay? And the ionizing does, which is like the gamma radiation, which is like, you know, what's used in a nuclear warhead and x-rays and all that kind of thing. We're not arguing that that is dangerous or, you know, not dangerous, or it is, okay, everybody agrees on that. It's the fact that they say this is not dangerous, this non-ionizing. And what the science very clearly tells us is that the effects are virtually identical. It's just more subtle with this non-ionizing. And so it's, it's cumulative, not, right? It's cumulative. It's cumulative. Very good point. Thank you. It's cumulative. And so it's that's why it's so important to reduce your exposures even a little bit if you can at some point uh, because of this uh, cumulative nature. So it is, it's low level, subtle, it's not about the power. So the, it's, the point of 5G is it's just increasing the density of this exposure. That's, that's what it is. And it is this cumulative effect. And that is what is impacting us, this cumulative effect. And it's, it's the cumulative effect of all these different exposures because what I talk about uh, in my courses and things is radio frequency radiation, everything which is like wireless, electric fields, magnetic fields, and dirty electricity. And those are the four categories uh, I talk about. And I have a very, well, well, we'll talk about solutions if you want, when you're ready. But yeah, so that's basically to answer your question about the power. It's not about the power. It's, it's low level and we can't feel it but our bodies, our cells can, and it is impacting our cells. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like people have this constant low-grade stressor that they think is, the, they, I think they attribute it to, oh, I have just financial stress, or I've got family stress, or it's my boyfriend, it's his, it's him, or they, but they just constantly feel the stress, anxiety, depression, and inner conflict because they don't, uh, their body is kind of interpreting it as that when they don't realize it's just this constant pulsating thing acting on their body and their body's energy field. 
as well. Um, so yeah, let's talk about strategies. Let's talk about Absolutely. Protection. protection. Let's talk about solutions. So what are your favorite strategies <laughs> to protect yourself from EMF? So, okay, so I've um, evolved this approach and this is really from, it's grown over time and it's how I dealt with, it's how I got my health back on track. So I was hypersensitive and I'm still sensitive. I'm sensitive to energy, but I no longer have the debilitating symptoms. So that is obviously a, a big game changer. <laughs> and uh, because there were so many things I couldn't do, so many places I couldn't go when I was hypersensitive. And one of the things I couldn't do is travel because you were talking about traveling. And I also love to travel, particularly to Italy. Yeah. Uh, but the food is amazing. <laughs> um, but also, I, and you they know, have 3G. Yeah. I don't really look, concern myself with that, you know, and I go through the airport radar and on the plane and all that. And I, I don't like all that, obviously. And, um, but, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do to have a good pizza or some, yeah. <laughs> some good Chianti. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so uh, my approach is really simple and it is based around, it's a three-step approach to this whole thing which we call emfs firstly is to understand and that's what you're doing today folks by listening to me and dr wendy here is understanding this whole thing uh trying to get your brain around it if you've managed to stay with us until this point in the conversation well done brownie points uh it is pretty uh, heavy. There's a lot of technical jargon, and I'm sure you've said things you've not understood. Uh, you've not, I've, you've not understood. I've, no, I've got a weird accent as well. So you find it strange, <laughs> difficult to follow, and I say words like router when I should be saying router. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so I apologise for that. But yeah, no, I'm just joking. It's um, it's understanding, and it takes a bit of time. Uh, but that's the first thing in, so you've picked up a few things which I've said, hopefully, because if you don't understand, then you can't actually deal with it. And the way we deal with it is, or the first part of dealing with it is the second thing, is to measure. First, we measure, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. We measure by using uh, what's called an EMF meter, and I've actually got one here, how handy. Um, and that is called that's a trifield TF2 oh, I meter. Have, I have one of those too. Oh, I have one too. Oh, how cute! Well done. We got the same. <laughs> so that's a great little meter. Um, I've got loads of them. I've got a real collection. That's an amazing meter. Oh, the nice. meter. I'm challenged. And, uh, I've also got the. Yeah, I've got loads of gadgets. I tell you, I love gadgets. That's a, a dirty electricity meter. So I'm not saying you go out and buy. You have to buy a whole load of meters. I've got a bag full of meters here, <clears throat> just in case you wanted to, me to impress you. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying you have to go out and buy loads of meters, but at some point, I'm not even saying today you have to go out and buy a meter, but I'm saying at some point, this is, so this is a global approach, okay? <laughs> and a meter like this, as you know, Dr. Wendy, it, uh, it measures the three things, the uh, electric fields, the magnetic fields, and the radio frequency radiation. And uh, the reason I and I'm, I do meter reviews on my website also because this one is actually really simple, but some of them are a bit complicated, and so I explain how they work. And even this one, you'll have some questions, you know, about how it works, and there's some buttons in the back as well, which maybe you've not seen. <laughs> uh, so we have to measure at some point, and the third thing is no surprise now is there's the mitigation and the mitigation there's three steps uh, to mitigation you can turn off the device which is causing these exposures you can increase the distance and there's a really this is a really important notion of distance is your friend when and i'm sure you've heard that before if you've had other guests on somebody said that before why is distance your friend well distance is always kind of your friend um with anything that can impact you it just makes sense yeah the further away you get from something which is causing harm even a chemical uh which is causing harm you know the odor of that chemical for instance uh, then it makes sense you get further away from it but with emfs it's this exponential effect 
when we get in a way. So you just get away a little bit. Literally, uh, you can move your, when you're using your cell phone. Okay, this is a EMF meter, but if you're using your cell phone, just moving it literally millimeters away from your brain, you can reduce the exposure thousands of times. Hmm. Thousands. So it's just absolutely mind blowing this notion of this exponential effect. And that's why really um, small efforts pay off big in terms of your health, even though you can't feel it. And this is a shame is that you can't feel it. And that's why people like me are talking about this because I have this, I can feel it and not, not just me uh, can feel it. And this is really why I'm talking about it. This because otherwise I would just be somebody who'd read a book or read some research and thought it was dangerous. And, and that's good too. And there's people like that doing that too. But it's, it's obviously when you felt something and you felt it in a bad way, you don't forget that. So, <laughs> so this is not something which is, uh, you know, I'm going to forget quickly. Um, so yeah, so the mitigation, the three parts of the mitigation is turn off if you can this thing off, increase the distance, and uh, thirdly, and it's thirdly because it's always the last resort, and people get this back to front, that's to say, people suddenly become EMF sensitive, and this does happen, it's not just me, or the, uh, this happens quite often, uh, I wouldn't say all the time, but quite often is boom, just, right, just comes on like that. And then it's like, oh my God, I've got to shield. I've got to shield. I've got to shield everything. No, you've got to follow this, understand, measure, mitigate. Uh, that's what you do. And turn off first if you can. Increase the distance first if you can. And then you shield. And whatever you're talking about, whether you're talking about cell phone, radiation, whether you're talking about Wi-Fi, whether you're talking about the EMS from your electrical wiring, it's the same, these principles, it's the same overriding guiding principles. Fantastic. And are there any uh, particular products that you really like to help people to shield their body from, from EMFs, like anything around the home or what are your thoughts on like cell phone stickers? Because, you know, there's, there's certain like little products you can get like cell phone stickers, but that's only helping with the phone. What, there's yeah. all this other stuff around. There is so a lot. What, what is um, your, your strategies? So when I became electrically sensitive, I just wanted it to go away. And I would have paid anything. I would have paid money, which I didn't have. I would have put myself in debt. I didn't actually put myself in debt, but I spent a lot of money buying everything and anything to to get rid of the pain. I just wanted the pain to go away. I didn't want to learn about EMFs. I wasn't interested. I just wanted to go away and get on with my life and go to Italy and drink Chianti and eat pizza. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just wanted to get on with my life. I didn't want to know about this. But um, it wouldn't go away. And whatever, nothing I tried worked. And some things did try. I did try, did work. But they only worked for a short period of time. And I just kept coming back to, I was trying everything. And, 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 and this is where my approach came from, is that having tried everything, this actual approach works. And so what I say to people is, and now this is obviously a long time ago. This is 2002 when I was buying everything and everything and trying everything. And so what I say to people now is the, the harmonizers, the resonators and the diodes and uh, the pendants and so on uh, are, are all well and good, but you need this fundamental rigorous EMF protection, which I'm talking about here, this three-step approach. Yeah, yeah. There's no one miracle thing that there is isn't. going to like fix everything. You, you. There is a learning curve involved here. You have to know what you're dealing with. You have to know what's in your home emitting frequencies. You have to reduce. I 100% agree with you. And there's a lot of different things you can do. Like there's Faraday cages, so you can at least protect you while you're sleeping. And there, I use a, a lot of different things around my home and I'm always like testing things, but it took me a minute to get there. There was a learning curve. And that's why I love that you have a course 
to help teach lay people this very, very important information. Can you talk about that in the, your book too, of course? Of course, yeah. So it's just out, the book. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry to keep showing. Um, EMF Practical Guide, 290 pages, over 500 uh, references, um, most of them scientific, a lot, a lot of science. I wanted to write a really uh, science book, so I've, I've spent most of the last year actually writing this and my next book will be more energy it will be about the energy and then i'll probably stop writing because i'm not a writer <laughs> um but it had to be done well you could have fooled me because you have a oh, thank you <laughs> well yeah so it didn't what i'm saying is it didn't come easy and i had a lot of help um well i wrote the book and then i i asked some um people uh, like doctors, building biologists, and uh, other experts, um, the uh, scientific advisor for the Earthing Institute, for instance. Um, lots, yeah, so um, about half a dozen or eight people, experts, a master electrician in Canada, to review certain chapters because I wanted this to be as scientifically accurate as possible. And it's it's really solution oriented book with lots of free stuff you can do, free and easy. It's in three levels. So there's free and easy, intermediate and advanced. And for instance, the, the Faraday cage and the shielding and all that, that's the advanced stuff. Because it's that's there's for and against. There's for and against for all of this. And in the title, you noticed how I say living a naturally healthy life. Well, that's what I'm all about the naturally healthy life because you can't outsmart mother nature. And the more we, the more we understand that and, you know, actually mother nature is, is a frequency. Uh, the earth is a frequency. We've got the Schumann uh, resonance, which is a frequency which we're all connected with. Our brain's practically the same as our brain, 7.83 um, hertz uh, per second. So, yeah, we are that. We are these vibrational beings. So my course, so it's a package with the book, with a, a four-part webinar series, EMF protection made simple, and some other goodies as well. Um, some some uh, podcast goodies as well on some of the different aspects. For instance, EMFs in cars and, and EMFs in your ho in your home office and things like that. So yeah, so it's a really comprehensive answer to this whole emf question which people are beginning to ask and people need to understand that it is it is a learning curve as you say and i know it's it's maybe a lot if it's the first time you're hearing about this or if you've had other guests on maybe it's the things which people are uh, have heard today which they've heard before that's that's really great but yeah it, it it's worth it it's really worth it. And, and, and that's the point is it's not because you can't feel it, that it's not impacting your health. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really important for anyone interested in health to take the time to learn about this issue in detail because yes, people can have thyroid issues and have different diagnoses and whatnot and make efforts to with their diet and their supplements and their exercise and their sleep and trying to do all these other efforts when you have to think more upstream, like what, what, are, what is this thing that's impacting my body, this EMF and solve that. And that solves a lot of things, a lot of problems downstream. Um, and just, I think this is where people need to start with their health. When I'm working with clients, this is where I start them because that fixes so many other issues. Then we see what's left over to fix. So I, I can't stress enough how important this is, how important your work, Lloyd, is. And I really think people should get your book and get your course and learn more about it. Thank you. And my, by the way, my book's full of stories as well, because that's the thing I noticed is people connect with stories. They don't connect with the science. They want to know the science, but it's really the stories. And their stories are unbelievable, literally. Uh, like a couple who were struggling to get uh, pregnant, or lady was anyway, couldn't for years and went to see, uh, it was actually uh, David Getoff, I don't know if you know him, 
um, yeah. who's yeah. and he told me this story and he's, he he muscle tested and figured out it was a Wi-Fi. He stopped the Wi-Fi within thirty days. She got pregnant. Huh. Wow. And this yeah, and and so many stories about that. I've got stories like that uh, related to diabetes, related to tinnitus. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, it is it is crazy. It is crazy that we're, people don't know about this and there's really easy things they can do uh, to protect themselves and, 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 and improve their health really, maybe not overnight, but really quickly. Yeah, 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 I agree. And so, uh, Lloyd, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, I honestly, I haven't read your book yet. I cannot wait to read it because I know that you put so much work into this and you have so many studies. So it's something that I'm going to be reading and I recommend that you guys in the audience also pick up a copy yourself. So where can we find your book and your website? You can find it on my website. You can find it on Amazon, of course, and not that particularly like Amazon, what they're doing these days. But um, yeah, that's, uh, so we have to make compromises. And, uh, but yeah, so it's on my website, electricsense.com and um, amazon.com or Amazon, wherever you live. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, Lloyd, thanks for coming on the show. And everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Myers Detox Podcast, where we talk about every type of toxin, not just heavy metals and chemicals, but EMF toxins as well, EMF radiation. And so thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys next week.